What's going on guys and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show. I hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. We're within 18 seconds now of getting the final score from this week's matchup between the number 23 Minnesota Golden Gophers and the number 7 ranked Michigan Wolverines. Minnesota currently leads by a score of 75 to 57. And this game is really unfortunate if you are a Wolverines fan like myself. This is going to end our perfect season at the record of 11 and 0 and it's unfortunate that it had to happen with no Eli Brooks starting at shooting guard and you can see how out of sync um, we were especially offensively but a lot of credit to Minnesota um, to bounce back uh, Mi Michigan actually beat Minnesota quite heavily only about a week ago and Minnesota did a fantastic job really locking in defensively I thought they rushed Michigan, um, Michigan's offense. I thought they did a great job of controlling the tempo. A much, much different game than we saw a week ago. A lot less aggressive by Michigan. Minnesota came out really, really hard fought game. They played really gritty today. Um, figure it out. Figured it out offensively in the second half. And I think you've got to be really happy bouncing back like this if you are a Minnesota fan. I think Minnesota. Um, the record doesn't show how good of a team they actually are, you know, coming into this game with four losses, but they faced a bunch of tough teams on the road. Um, this is actually their eighth ranked opponent that they played this season. You think Michigan has had a tough schedule? Well, Minnesota's schedule has been just as tough. They've played a lot of the upper end big teams on the road, but Minnesota has been fantastic, now improving to 11-0 and um, when playing at home. This is definitely a team um, that's going to be really interesting, you know, as you get more into the part of the Big Ten schedule um, to see what they can do in this really, really tough conference. Um, but again, Minnesota defensively controlled the tempo. Michigan really struggled. Um, and you could see it, especially in the turnover category. We had, I think, close to 20 turnovers. Um, eight of those turnovers came in the first nine minutes. We just did not look ready to play. Um, 11 turnovers in the first half. And again, you know, you expected Michigan to sort of clean it up in the second half. Didn't really end up happening, which I thought was a little disappointing. Um, but anyways, let's move on to the box score. Um, we'll start with Michigan. I, I made a video a few days ago about why the Michigan Wolverines have been so successful this year. And one of the main reasons, and even from what I saw in the comment section... A lot had to do with Mike Smith and what he's done to fill in the shoes of Xavier Simpson today. He was not good in a game where really everybody in the starting lineup had to step up because, again, you had less depth on the bench um, because you had to start Sean D. Brown and, you know, no Eli Brooks who can spread the floor a bit, shoot the three, can play some defense. But he shot 0 for 6 today. Um, did have 10 assists, but again, 0 for 6, not that great. Um... Sean D. Brown was our best player today, 6 for 12. Um, he, he was great from 3, had 14 points. Um, really, really good when he gets into the corner and, you know, gave us some momentum at some points. And I think if we did end up making a comeback, which it looked like we were maybe trending towards that direction um, in the early part of the second half, a lot of that would have been um, from Sean D. Brown channeling his, um, you know, best Duncan Robinson impression and what we used to see from him shooting in the corner and now see from the NBA. Um, but he did a great job today filling in for Eli Brooks. It's unfortunate Michigan couldn't get the win. Um, but again, I've talked highly of Sean D. Brown and what he's done coming off the bench all year. And I just love how he can score in bunches and really give you that boost of momentum when you need it. Franz Wagner was not good. I mean, he's a guy who, again, I spoke to it in past videos about the one word that needs to define Franz Wagner, and that's consistency. And he was not consistent today. 0 for 4 from 3, had 9 rebounds, had 8 points, um, but really not good. Still active on the defensive side of the floor, two steals and a block, but again, he had some shots today that were just way off, and Franz Wagner has been a massive part of why we've beaten three ranked teams in a row prior to this game, just didn't show up uh, today. In terms of Isaiah Livers, started the game off fantastic, hit I think it was his first two threes, had six points early. Um, and then later in the first half, towards the second half, he was not that great. He ended with 11 points, but ended shooting 4 for 11. Um, nine rebounds, did other things. But again, with no Eli Brooks in the lineup, you know, and a team who was turning the ball over as much as they were, they really needed Isaiah Livers to step up and give them just a little bit extra. And he didn't do that. Isaiah Livers did not play terrific today, especially offensively. And then Hunter Dickinson. Um... 
Looking at the stats, Hunter Dickinson shot four for five, had nine points, but I know he's just a freshman, but from what we have seen over the course of the season and how mature Hunter Dickinson has looked, you know, down low, today was not really anywhere close to that. There were some defensive possessions, um, I thought, where it looked like he didn't give any effort at all, which is really unfortunate. Um, you know, he dominated the Robins matchup in the last game against Minnesota, he got dominated today. Again, he's just a freshman. He's going to learn. Hasn't got a lot of experience, you know, under his belt at the college level. But today, I would feel pretty comfortable saying that at least in the last little while, this was by far the worst game that we've seen from Hunter Dickinson. In terms of the bench, um, I thought Austin Davis played really well. He had six points, shot three for five. Um, other than that, a bunch of other guys got involved. Again, we had to reach a little more into our bench today. Um, we saw Williams play. Johns had a lot of minutes, even though he didn't really play well. Um, but again, I think a lot of it has to do with Eli Brooks. I'm not saying that would have changed the outcome of the game. I'm just saying that at the end of the day, do I think our turnover numbers, our offense would have been a little more in sync if he was in the starting lineup? Yes, I do. Do I think that Sean D. Brown is better to boost off the bench and work into the rotation? Yes, I do. But again, credit to Minnesota for a fantastic game. Let's flip over to Minnesota again. Robbins had a fantastic game. 8 for 13, 8 rebounds, 2 steals, 2 blocks, 22 points in a matchup against Hunter Dickinson that he absolutely got obliterated only about a week ago. And today, he looked a lot better, a lot more composed. He made some tough shots. Um, and just a really, really different Robbins than Michigan saw in the first game. And I thought he was the biggest difference in this game. Marcus Carr, uh, you know, Minnesota star guard, shot 6 for 18, 17 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, 3 steals. He was really active everywhere. Had the ball in his hands for a large portion of this game. Had some really, really, really bad shot selections, I thought, in the first half. And even the commentators were saying that even though he's such a big part of what Minnesota does, he should have got pulled. Um, but he did figure it out. I thought overall he was pretty good. And obviously, you know, he's the backbone of this Minnesota team. Um, they didn't do a lot in terms of the bench. Um, only 12 points in total off their bench. But I thought Curry off the bench did pretty good. He shot three for five with six points, um, three steals, two assists. I thought he did a lot early in the first half. Um, when Michigan was really struggling and when Marcus Carr especially was struggling, um, I thought he did a really good job. He made some big, one or two really big shots um, at some times in that first half, and I thought he was really solid as well. Um, quickly, we'll just look at the team stats. Michigan shot 6 for 22 from 3. Again, didn't have Eli Brooks. They're probably their best 3-point shooter. But this overall is one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country and only shot 27.3%. A lot of those came at the beginning of the second um, half. Other than that, did not shoot well. Got to the line a bunch at the end of the game. Didn't get to the line really at all throughout the first half and early second half. Um, and I think when you look at the team stats, you see Minnesota, who wasn't really that much better, only shot... 47% only shot 22% from three. Michigan had their chances to win this game, but it comes to the 20 total turnovers compared to Minnesota's nine. And also points um, off turnovers heavily, heavily, obviously, in Minnesota's favor. Um, quickly, let's just look at each of these teams' next games. Michigan will play Maryland, who will go into that game with a record of 8-6. and six, Struggling a little bit in their conference, only a record of 2-5, and five, but they got a very talented guard, just like Minnesota in Eric Ayala. So that'll be really interesting to see how Michigan, how Hunter Dickinson can really bounce back and go back to the basketball that we saw for the first 11 games of the season. Um, in terms of Minnesota, they'll play Nebraska, and Nebraska is going to go into that game with a record of 4-8, and eight, but really, really struggling with the 0-5 record in conference play. They got a talented guard when you look at Allen, who's averaging 18.5 points per game. Um, I expect Minnesota to get the job done there and really turn around their season, you know, and make their way continue, continuously up the rankings. Um, but anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today. Let me know your thoughts on the game down in the comment section below. What did you see from Michigan? Um, you know, do you think it was only 
a loss because of the turnovers that we saw today? Let me know all of that down in the comment section below. Um, but if you did like today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs. We do cover a ton of Michigan Wolverines basketball on this channel as well as football. So if you're a Michigan fan, make sure to stick around and hit that subscribe button. But as always, guys, thank you so much.